Now, as a functional gastrointestinal disorder, IBS is caused by disruptions in the way that your brain and your gut are interacting with one another, which can cause frequent changes in your bowel movements. Now, our IBS is often talked about as a one size fits all. It's actually more of an umbrella term, which covers a number of different symptoms. And for the purposes of getting treatment, IBS can actually be divided into four different subtypes. So let's go through these four subtypes together and I'll help you understand which one that you have. Welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Jane and this channel is all about helping you take back control of your IBS. So if this is something that you want to learn more about, then make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Okay, so the first type of IBS is IBS-C, which means constipation is your most dominant symptom and is really characterized by stomach pain, bloating, infrequent bowel movements and hard stools, which can also be painful to pass. And you may also feel as though you need to strain a lot. You can also experience this feeling of a blockage in the anus or rectum and have this feeling that you haven't completely emptied your bowels. So for IBS to be diagnosed as IBS-C, at least 25% of your stools are hard and lumpy and fewer than 25% are what we call loose in consistency. Now, the second type of IBS is IBS-D, which means diarrhea is your most dominant symptom. And that also comes, unfortunately, with this sense of urgency and urgent need to empty your bowels. If you have IBSD, you'll likely feel as though you need to go to the toilet a lot more frequently and find when you go that your stools are loose and watery. Now, for this classification, it requires more than 25% of your stools to be loose and less than 25% to be hard and lumpy. Now, the third type of IBS is something called IBS-M, where the M stands for mixed. And this means that your bowel movements, your bowel symptoms aren't consistent and you experience both constipation and diarrhea. This is also known as IBS-A, where the A stands for alternating. And you may experience these changes in your stools and bowel habits either on a daily or weekly basis. Now, for your IBS to be diagnosed as IBS-M, your stools must be hard and lumpy, as well as loose in consistency at least 25% of the time. And finally, there is IBS-U, and this stands for IBS unclassified. Now, this subtype comes with a mixture of different symptoms and is a lot more harder to define, but basically your symptoms don't fall into the categories of IBS-C, D, or M. So now you know the four subtypes. If you feel comfortable sharing, let me know down in the comments which subtype is yours. Are you IBS-C, are you IBS-D, IBS-M, or IBS-U? Now it's also worth me mentioning here that there are an additional two types of IBS. The first occurs after an infection, which is known as post-infectious IBS. And the second occurs after a disease of the GI tract, which is known as post-diverticulitis IBS. Now, as always, remember to get your symptoms looked at by a doctor if you haven't yet been diagnosed with IBS. This is important because the symptoms of IBS can also be caused by other underlying health conditions, including things like inflammatory bowel disease, which includes ulcerative colitis and Crohn's. Now, if you want to learn more about the differences between IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, and IBS, then make sure you check out this next video. Okay, so that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. Now, if you want to learn more about my programs and my free IBS resources, then you can check out the links just down below this video and I will see you next time.